Hey horse lovers, welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. So we got hit with a damaging ice storm last night. All the generators are running on around here because we lost power at the houses, at the barn, in our little small community here. Oh my God. Another branch just went down. I don't know if you could hear that. It's so freaking scary. Anyways, last night it hit around like 8.30. We got all this freezing rain. It's absolutely insane. The branches are just falling off. Right now it's not as bad besides that one branch just broke because there's not as much wind, but the wind is supposed to pick up later today. So I'm gonna show you all of the damage we got. Luckily, everyone's okay, the horses are okay. I'm gonna show you them. I'm gonna tell you what I decided to do with them. And then hopefully when the wind picks up later, everything's gonna be okay. This is just some of the damage we've received overnight. So there's limbs everywhere, there's ice everywhere. Branches are just continuing to snap and break as the day continues our porch looked horrible our front yard's a mess and some of these limbs are really big it's hard to tell but they're not just little tiny limbs i mean they're huge branches so anyways this is my magnolia tree oh, this is my favorite one i'm gonna be so sad if this continues to crack and snap another huge tree that a bunch of big branches came down it's just amazing honestly what the ice can do and then this was our porch after Kyle cleaned it up. I'll show you the picture before he did. And I mean, look at that. Like we're just lucky it didn't fall on the roof, thankfully, but this is a hot mess. The issue is all of this is gonna continue throughout the day. So it's not gonna get any better right now. It's gonna continue to get worse and cause more damage and we're just gonna do the best we can and we really just can't do anything at the moment so just fingers crossed i mean some of these branches fell on my tractor and dump truck luckily they're okay but it could fall on the shop on the barn on the house you know we're just gonna do what we need to do and move some things around and just hope for the best that's all you can really do in these kind of situations Plus, everything is literally an ice rink. The grass is frozen, the driveway is frozen, everything is completely frozen. So essentially what's happening is the ice is freezing the branches and then they just are literally cracking, splitting, and breaking. It's insane, like I can hardly walk out here. It's freaking nuts. Maybe we need to take up ice skating, huh? As of now, the barn is okay, but there's this huge tree right there and then the power line as well. So that makes me really nervous, but there's nothing I can do about that. So again, just monitoring and hoping for the best is all that I can do currently. Now, I will say, even though this is horrendous, there is so much beauty when it comes to nature as well. The icicles look really cool. So I'm just trying to look at the positives here. But there definitely is some beautiful aspects to this ice as well, even though it's definitely a little bit inconvenient considering all the damage it's causing. My horse trailer is completely iced over. I mean, this ice is really thick too. That's the wild part about it. You can kind of see there. Now, thank goodness all the horses are okay. And I decided to keep three horses in this dry lot, which again, they have 24 seven hay. The footing is not slippery. It's just wet and muddy and kind of crappy. And they have heated water troughs. So there's three in this pasture and then three in this other paddock as well. You see Mr. Gaston, he's so sweet. Anyways, I put blankets on everybody that's out here because they have to share the shelter which all of them seem to be doing really well. And now I'm just gonna double check, make sure they stay dry and warm, look under the blanket. 
Mr. Gaston looks cozy, warm, dry, so that's excellent. Everything went according to plan. Now, obviously, the only concern here would be the power line and the trees, but you know, you just can't control everything. If a power line was to go down and they were in the barn, I wouldn't feel comfortable going in the barn either because you don't know where exactly it's gonna hit or fall down. So you know what I mean? I just did what I thought would be best. And luckily there's no other trees really in their paddock. Mr. Koa here being such a good boy, helping me out. We knew yesterday that this was coming. There was winter weather watches and all of that. Um, so we did the best we could to prepare, but we didn't know all the branches were gonna be breaking like this. And again, what makes me nervous is those power lines, like so close to the branches. And, but you know, you just can't do anything about it. You just have to do the best you can and be smart. So I did as much as I could with the horses as far as management wise. I think I had a good plan. I think everything went well. I'll tell you a little bit about what I did, how I managed them. And again, there's no power in the barn or anything. So I'm gonna feed this morning, clean a couple stalls. I won't be able to show it because it's dark, but I'll show you a little bit. But yeah, everybody's okay. So that's the good news. All the horses are okay. Koa's good. Penelope came outside yesterday morning when it wasn't crazy, spent a few hours outside. Then I brought her in. So she was all cozy and warm in the house. So all the animals and people are good. Our neighbors are good. Kyle went over, got their generator going. We made sure that they were okay. Our other neighbors, I talked to him this morning. So everybody's good in our little community here. But yeah, what I'm really nervous about is when the wind is gonna pick up later if this ice is still on all of the trees because it's supposed to pick up to like 30 to 50 mile per hour winds, but it is gonna warm up to 50 degrees. But this ice is thick, so I don't really know how that's gonna go. Um, and again, it's just the power lines. So as far as the horses go, the branches aren't really close to the paddocks besides this one tree here. And otherwise there's not really many, many trees in the dry lot. So I think I am gonna have everybody out because I just think that's what's gonna be best. I might rotate them in and out of the stalls today, just depending how it goes, but everybody's dry, cozy, warm. So whatever I decided, it ended up working. So that's good. So far, so good. Woo! <laughs> filming and walking on slippery ice is you know very smart anyways let me tell you a little bit about how i managed the horses yesterday so it started i want to say around 7 8 a.m it started sleeting and you could tell the roads were kind of getting crappy but nothing substantial it didn't really start picking up until about i want to say like noon yesterday and by that time i already had all the horses situated and then it got worse and worse and continued to progress. It was insane. It literally was sleeting, snowing, raining. It was windy. And then we had thunder and lightning during this ice storm last night. I mean, it was just insane. I've just never seen anything like this in my life to this extent. So that was wild. But as far as the horses go, what I decided to do is I put Bagheera in with Belle. They have separate paddocks, which I'm gonna show you. Belle literally just got out of quarantine, thank God, because I don't know how else I would have handled this. Like she needs shelter, they need shelter. And with all the other horses needing it too. But anyways, um, I'm not doing anything with her yet because this weather is just literally crazy. But she can at least be around, at least Bagheera right now. I'm not concerned about health at this point but I'm not gonna start working with her for a few more days because this is just insane and I want her to be comfortable and I'm gonna end up doing like a first grooming session video and then her first evaluation. So that will be coming sometime soon, but just be patient with me because I need to make sure that everybody here is healthy and safe and I want her to acclimate slowly. I'm not just rushing into this. I'm not just gonna pull her out tomorrow after this crazy storm and start working with her. Okay, anyway, sorry, rant over. So as you can see here, these are our private paddocks. So I put Bagheera in here, which by the way, she's doing way better. The abscess essentially is all blown out. She's much more sound. And then Belle, you can see her sticking her head out, is in this other private paddock. So they both have run-in shelters. Essentially, those are run-in stalls. They lead to the barn. Hey girl, you feeling better? I know, it's kind of icy. But yeah, they're still doing good. So yesterday they were just hanging out in their stalls, which I put hay in there too. Hi. So again, they have 24 seven round bales. I also put hay in their stalls. Belle has the really big stall and then Bagheera has the little bit smaller one, but it's still a good size. And of course they have water, they have their salt licks. But yeah, this was great because then Belle could kind of look into the barn, 
get a little bit more of an idea of the environment while still being in the same pen. So it's nice that we have this set up. Her and Bagheera are getting along pretty well. And yeah, at least they both have company. Bagheera can chill and just continue healing, which she's doing again a lot better. And Belle can get more acquainted. So this is how I manage these two. They can go in and out. Um, they stayed warm and dry. I continuously checked on them. And because they had a shelter, because it wasn't super, super cold, I didn't think they needed blankets because they just had a shelter to themselves. So yay, love you. Okay, I'm gonna go into the barn. I decided to keep Buzz inside just cause he's so small. So I kept him in a stall and then Mushu as well cause they're buddies. So I kept them both in the stalls overnight. Um, I kept Buzz in pretty much since noon yesterday and then I brought Mushu in around four um, when it was getting even worse. So they stayed in the stalls. Again, the power's out in there. I'll try to show you what I can. I'm about ready to turn them back out um, so that they can get some movement. And then again, if the wind picks up, then I'll just grab everybody and put them inside. I, I don't know what it's gonna end up doing. So I'm gonna be, you know, keeping an eye out for that. Hi, Mushi. <gasps> Mushi. So yeah, he stayed in basically last night. And like I said, the footing's not horrendous outside. I mean, it is, but like in the paddocks, the horses aren't slipping or anything. So he's gonna go out. I know, I'm gonna feed you. You're going out, boo. My cute baby. Yes. And then Buzzy B. Got clean that stall, put you out. I know you cute boy. He's been doing good with groundwork. We've been having fun. I'll do an update video soon. <laughs> got so many of you. We gotta keep everybody updated. Love when the power's out. So see in the barn, see Belle is right there. Yay. And then we come over here and see, so Mushu's on this side, so is Buzz over there. And then we have Bagheera and Belle here. She's outside right now, but you get the point. So that's nice. They have these little run-ins. They can go in and out as they please. My glasses were getting all wet. So again, there's so many different ideas and best practices when it comes to handling horses and this kind of weather. But you know, you just have to do what's best for each individual horse and your herd as a whole. And you know, you're gonna get those comments, oh, well, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? Or you should have done this, or you should have turned them all out in the indoor arena, or blah, blah, blah. You know what? I've been taking care of horses for years and I know it's best for my herd. So I'm gonna do what I think is best for them. And you know, what's the safest? And again, there's just, there's no, there's not always a right answer. It's not necessarily black and white. There's a lot of gray. So just know that when I make these decisions and manage my herd, there's a lot of thought that goes into it and variables. And it's, I couldn't possibly sit here and explain it. It would take hours, <laughs> but I'm consistently thinking about it and I'm always monitoring them. So I just want you to know that. Okay, I'm gonna start feeding them and then turn Mushu and Buzz back out. And then hopefully the wind isn't as crazy as they say it's gonna be later. Mr. Prince Charming enjoying his morning grain. He seems really relaxed and happy so far. And then you have Olaf as well. He's being a good boy. And then of course, Mr. Arlo. All of them are doing great. Gaston eating out of his pink bucket. And then we have Jafar. <laughs> He's so cute. And then Mr. Jiminy Cricket. This is horrible. And now we just got a notification that they might not have the power on for three days. Which again, we have a generator for the house, so that's fine. And the barn, you know, I can make it work with getting chores done and stuff, but it really stinks. And that's gonna put a damper on um, training and all of that, but you know, that doesn't matter. I mean, this is just life. But yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. And like I said, I was really wanting to start working with Belle this week, but it might have to wait till next week. We'll see horse lovers. I'm not gonna rush that process just to get content out. I want her to feel comfortable. I want to feel comfortable. And obviously I'm not gonna just put her in the indoor arena when it's dark. I want her to be able to see first. Are you ready to go out? Did you have a good breakfast? <laughs> you are the so freaking, oh, little schnucky. <laughs> I just love your little face. I don't have snacks and you just had breakfast. No, I didn't, mom. No, I didn't. You did. I saw you. I fed you. I watched you eat it. <laughs> oh, you poor baby. All right, I'm gonna put you out. Okay, blue shoes back out. Happy. Prince Charlie. <laughs> Be nice to little Mushy. Be nice. Come on. 
pull back out. Hi, pretties. Okay, everybody's fed, watered, happy. I'm gonna clean some stalls. And then, yeah, go from there. Gotta love it. I love Michigan. His stall is an absolute disaster. Lovely. I gave Mushu way too much hay and he wasted so much of it. Lovely. Which makes it a pain in the butt for me to muck, but that's my fault. All right, I got all the stalls done. I'm not gonna add any more shavings right now because I just want them to air out a little bit. But yeah, I'm glad that's done. Well, I'm trying to get the tractor out of this branch. I just cut a couple branches and now it's mainly on the dump truck. So a little bit more and then it'll be free. All right, I got the tractor started. It's a little cold blooded, so I had to put some starter fluid in it. And then the governor was frozen open. So it was screaming for a little bit until I figured that out. But once I get off work from my normal job, I'm gonna have to take that branch off the dump truck and I'll probably use the dump truck to clean up the yard. And then I'll drive it to the back of the pasture. And we have a big uh, pile of sticks back there that I'll have to burn, so fun stuff. The neighbor's house got hit pretty bad too. There's hardly anything left of this tree. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Now we're going to put a round bale out in the main paddock so that they have plenty of hay. Kyle actually made and welded this hay spear for us and it picks up the round bales. Pretty cool. So because the footing is crappy in the paddock right now, we can't drive the tractor out there because we'll get stuck. So now Kyle and I have to roll this 700 pound round bale up to the bale barn and then tip it over. So we're gonna do that. All right, so we got her rolled out. Now we take the net off. This really is not that fun. Not on the not in these conditions. Then we take this net off. Normally I help, I'm just trying to film to show you guys. And then we flip her over. We'll pull that net now so that it comes comes down evenly. Here we go. Okay. Ta-da! Too far. Happy now? Then we throw our wrap away. Hands are cold. I know. Well, I don't even have gloves on. Okay, so right now I'm gonna give Belle some dewormer. I have her on a Panicure Power Pack, so it's five days straight of this dewormer. And I do this with every new horse that comes. And then she'll get a fecal like a month later. But I definitely just want to get rid of anything before she does integrate with the herd. Hi. <laughs> She's like, what is going on? I mean, this poor girl, like literally it's been so warm and then cold and freezing. And then she's in a new environment, all these changes. But honestly, she's doing really well. <laughs> okay. We're borrowing Gaston's halter till I bring her big one out here. <laughs> what a sweetheart you are. Okay, so sorry, I can't film giving the dewormer because I have to give it to her, but that's what I'm gonna do. Beautiful love girl, you're so sweet. She did really good. 
Is that yucky? Oh, hold on, girl. I gotta take your halter off. She's like, um, yeah, that was disgusting. Sorry, but we have to. Okay, horse lovers, for now, everything is taken care of. Horses are happy, healthy, dry, warm. Everybody has hay, water, they had their grain, they have their salt licks, everything's good right now. I'm gonna go inside, relax a little bit, take a hot bath, and I'll keep you updated on what the wind decides to do. The problem is if the wind picks up, these branches are coming down, like they're still falling as we speak now. So fingers crossed, it doesn't get too crazy, but you know, we'll just hope for the best and there's really nothing we can do about it. Good piggy. Good girl. Good girl. Penelope's staying all warm and cozy in the house. My poor little baby. Are you such a good girl? You get some drinky drink? No? Penelope, come here. Penelope, what you doing? All right, horse lovers, despite all of the craziness, let's look at some positives and do some thank yous from the Amazon wish list. Laura, thank you so much for this brand new ECP saddle pad. Welcome to the channel. Really appreciate your gift. I know Belle is going to love it and look beautiful in it. Thank you, Lisa, for this hot pink saddle pad. So this is a different one. This is an eventing pad. So I'm gonna have one for dressage and for jumping for Belle. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa, for this ECP half pad. Thank you so much, Madison, for this trail bag. I can't wait to use it once we hit the trails again. Thank you so much, Lisa, for this gorgeous halter for Belle. Really hope it fits her. Can't wait to try it. Also, Lisa, thank you for these gorgeous split reins. And also, thank you for these three bags of Daily Gold Gut Supplement. Really appreciate you guys. If you want to support Free Spirit Equestrian, you can buy something off the Amazon wish list. Link in the description. Thank you again. Unfortunately, we kept receiving more and more damage. Trees were breaking. It was honestly becoming devastating to the trees. My magnolia tree is basically gonna have to be almost cut down. We're gonna try to give it a chance, but we're gonna have to remove so many branches. Our yard is a complete hot mess. The bushes, the branches, but luckily the ice is starting to melt. So that's a positive sign. Hopefully that will help with even more possible damage. Okay, horse lovers, so it got a little bit worse than it was this morning, but now it's getting better. Thank goodness the ice has melted off the tree branches before the wind is going to pick up. Thank you. Now there's way less likely that something might happen or there might be more damage because there's not ice on the trees, so they're less likely to break. Yay! But the fun part is now we got to clean all this crap up and I am not looking forward to it. Now it's just a straight up mud hole, but you can see the ice is gone pretty much completely. I mean, that's pretty freaking awesome considering what could happen. And the grass is no longer crunchy, just mucky. But yeah, total mess. Clean all this up. So if you want to come and have a huge bonfire at Free Spirit Equestrian in a month when we burn all these branches, join us. Kyle's low-key excited that he gets to use the dump truck. This dump truck was my grandpa's. Um, he passed away a few years ago, but I bought it because I have a farm and we've made a lot of use out of it, getting sand, gravel, materials, moving things. So it's kind of, it's fun when we get to use it. It makes me think of my grandpa. Okay, so. <laughs> Why? Also, I went for a drive into town because I needed coffee, big surprise. And I wanted to see like what other damage there was like around this area. I swear, I think we got hit harder than anybody. Like I drove past house and I'm like, okay, yeah, some branches down and this and that. Yeah, that looks kind of bad. Then I drive past my house. And I'm like, holy crap, like ours looks horrendous. I don't know, I think it's just because we have more trees that have weaker limbs and you know, all that, so. I'm actually really sad about my magnolia tree. It was my favorite one. You know, it's like basically just destroyed. The wind is picking up a little bit more, but again, since everything melted, we're gonna be okay. Still a lot of damage, but nothing substantial, so we're, we're good here. Be careful. She's 
she's going down. <laughs> this tree has been leaning for a long time and it's kind of a hazard, so we are gonna cut it down. I know, that's a crazy sad. And he just sitting back there. All right, horse lovers, thanks for tuning in to our episode today. It was a little bit crazy, but I'm glad that everything's okay for the most part. Mainly just some cleanup. It is going to be a lot of work, but we're going to be good here at Free Spirit Farm. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss anything Free Spirit Equestrian. And I'll see you next time, horse lovers. Bye!